Well, that was uh, fun, as always. Oh, that Flatten. Probably don't need these on anymore, do I? That's better. Maybe not this either, hey? Let's get rid of that. Well, so, uh, this one's going to be a good one, actually. I think I said that on all of them. I hope they are all good ones. I actually think they're pretty good. So hopefully you guys think the same. Um, and if that's actually true, can you do me a favor and subscribe? I actually got a feeling there's some friends of mine even that aren't subscribing to this channel. Uh, I want these to get out to as many people as possible for as many people to learn something as they can and uh, to enjoy the videos. So we're uh, getting a few videos on now and um, very soon gonna be releasing the podcast, which is very exciting. Um, and obviously you want to get it out to as many people as I can. So just want to sort of give back to the community. I love what I've learned from them all. So there's another guy that I spoke to and you're just about to see all about him. So his name is Ewan Gibson. And Ewan Gibson is the man, the myth, the legend behind 84 Engineering. So 84 Engineering is Australian owned uh, husband and wife team, make some of the best grinders on the market, possibly the best grinders on the market. Now I can say that unbiasedly, or biasedly, I don't know which way, because I own one and I paid for it out of my own money and I love it. Um, I've used several other brands now. I've only owned this one, but I bought it and I love it. It's awesome. So it does everything I want. I sort of went all out, bought the 48. The 48 that I got, it's got the stand and it uh, goes sideways, as you see, just like that. Uh, when you grind, you have to grind like this, but maybe, that, I don't know, maybe that's just me. So, uh, yeah, got the 48. I love it. It was a big chunk of money for someone who's not selling many knives like me. Um, but really, it wasn't in comparison to some of the other grinders I looked at. It was actually really, really affordable. And I wouldn't regret it. In fact, I'd buy a second one. If I could only warrant it, I'd buy a second one. But what I did do uh, is maybe buy something else, which you might see a little bit of in this video, actually. Um, yeah, I love it. So... Again, I feel like I'm just going to say thank you every every video. Every video I put on, you guys are just smashing, just loving them. Um, I'm really appreciative. Like, if if you're not subscribing, please, please subscribe. Like, so many people are watching them. I'm getting like 19,000 watch minutes a month. That's crazy. Like, people want to see this idiot talk. Uh, or maybe the people he's talking to is probably more important. But what I could ask is, if you're not subscribing and you're liking my videos, please just hit the subscribe button. I know sometimes it comes through Facebook and then you gotta log in, it's a pain in the ass. Toby Fire and Steel on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube. YouTube, it's really easy to find. Please go find it, uh, subscribe and press the bingy button, you know, the thing that everyone tells you to do, all us YouTubers, we try to get you to do so you see my new videos come up. But um, yeah, so I do wanna give a bit of a shout out. You see lots of photos, I do a bit of B-roll on these, lots of photos. Uh, most of them come from Riley Burns, so uh, he's a good friend of mine, excellent knife photographer, and his company is called Bespoke Craft Photography, and second to none, second to none. One, I'd say the best knife make, knife photographer in Australia. If you want to get a knife done, um, you've got a knife you want to sell, you're just really proud of it, you want to get a photo taken, send it to him. Riley Burns, you find him on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, he does way more stuff behind the scenes than anyone realizes uh, for the KAA and that sort of thing. Um, He's behind a lot of stuff at the knife shows. Anyway, the guy's a star. If you want to get a photo done, do that. So the photos again are done in this by Riley on this one. Um, thank you again for that, Riley. Your photos are beautiful. I will always use your photography skills as mine a second par. Uh, I should shut up and just let you guys do your thing. So um, watch the video. Let me know what you think. Subscribe. And um, good or bad. Have a chat with me. Let me know what, what you thought about it. Um, really appreciate it. Thanks very much. This is Ewan Gibson. Great to Gibson. Gibson. Ewan Gibson. I do know his name, honest. Of 84 Engineering. So you may not know his name, but you'll definitely know his product. So 84 Engineering, most of us own one of these 48 or 72 inch grinders. And if you don't, why don't you? Um, just thought I'd pull him aside and have a chat with him and see what, what he's got to say about Australian knife makers and, uh, and our industry. How you doing? I'm good. Yeah? I'm good.
that you used to be on camera? No, not at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> you got the face for it. I've got the face for it. Oh, that, that, that scared look. Terrified look. Terrified look. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. 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 So, um, give us a little bit of an origin story. Like background, where you came from, what got you into grinders, what other tools you're making out of for engineering, that sort of stuff. Uh, so, originally, um, I was actually trained as a furniture maker. Yeah, right. Completely different. <laughs> <laughs> completely different. Um, but like from a very young age, I was interested in blacksmithing. Um, and I stumbled across, came across a guy who was into uh, historical medieval reenactment. Um, and I started making swords for the reenactment industry. That was actually my first foray into sort of knife making, so to speak. Yeah, right. Are we talking so, about like, like we're talking heat treated swords? Oh, heat treated swords. Yeah, right. um, all blunt um, yeah, yeah, yeah. or all heat treated. So no one dies during No one dies. Time. You know, they've got to have a certain thickness edge and a certain radius point. And, you know, oh, there's rules. There's rules. Okay. There's rules. You know, um, they still get injured. But, yeah, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> they're still on the um, And of course, uh, you know. Even then, back then, I was frustrated with my tools. You know, I had a multi-tool, that's all I used to grind on. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I always thought it would be great to have different size contact wheels and, and things like that. I never really thought it would be would be possible. Yeah, right. Really, you know, at the end of the day. Get a review on a ginger beer. Um, no, I'm good, thank you. This is Andrew Smith, by the way. <laughs> 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 we love this guy, he runs the show. He literally runs the show. Literally. Walking in and coming literally. Away. Um, and I guess I, I got the opportunity to, to retrain in fitting and turning, um, which was at the end far more interesting for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I much prefer the sort of fine accuracy you can achieve in steel than you can in timber. Yeah, right. um, and that sort of progression, I guess, naturally led to um, me setting up a workshop for myself. Um, and I, I had a little gum tree ad just offering machine services. Yeah, right. And a certain local knife maker. Um, came to me one day and said, can you make me one of these? And that was a search one. Oh, really? That was Matthew McVicker. He said, you know what, if you can, there's a bloke I think you need to talk to. His name's Corin. Oh, that guy. <laughs> that guy. And um, I spoke to, um, I got on the phone to Corin, and um, it, it was apparent that there was, there was an opening in the marketplace. Oh, market, yeah. Big hole in the marketplace, at, at least a time for, for accessories. So... Yeah. I started manufacturing um, surface grinders, um, contact wheels. Um, there, was a, there was a big cry for big contract, contact wheels, so yeah, right. um, I did. Hang on, how long have you been doing the, the so, so the whole thing machining is about machining? Um, about ten years. Oh, okay, right. right. Yeah, so yeah. this is. Oh, I'm thinking you did the machining and then you started your own business three months no, later. So, no, no. So yeah, yeah so okay. um, sort of on and off and, and bits and pieces. And we, we ran a. My wife and I ran a successful uh, florist business as well at the same time. And, had two kids and you know it's all the fun stuff. Yeah, it's not like you do when you when you've got nothing better to better do. do yeah. Uh, um, yeah, it just sort of naturally progressed, and and we he we decided we'd, we'd build a grinder, and the the new grinder, as Corin named it at the time, was was born. Um, so I believe four years ago on this weekend um, at the symposium at that piece, the first ever new grinder was demoed. Really, for the first time, just on the tent. Called it the noob grinder because you'd imagine it was for noobs in the industry. Um, well, that's a question for Corin. Oh, okay, I do right. believe I do believe that was his that was his um, and that was the always the, the intention of the grinder was to be a, an entry level machine that was oh. low cost, simple, you know, simple to use, small enough to fit in anyone's workshop. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah. They, they started at seventy two or forty eight. No, started at forty eight. So we we looked at it. We decided should we do a thirty six? Do we do a forty eight? Do we do a seventy two? 60, what, what did we do? We decided we'd go 48 um, to keep the cost down and to keep the, the overall package size down. You know, yeah. Because you look at a 72 inch grinder, it's so much bigger, so much longer, yeah. it's oh, so much more space. It literally takes a twice amount of space. Yeah, yeah. So um, the grinder was born and it obviously was, was a, a, a big success. Yeah. You know? and, and we sort of haven't looked at it. So it's only been four years. It's only been four years. Yeah, right. I mean, I've basically, the 84 Engineering as a company has been around for about five. Right. Um, the, we did the surface grinders and, and contact wheels first um, before the sort of grinder for the yeah, right. cart before the horse. Okay, so surface grinder, was that the similar style that we see now that attached to a belt That's grinder? That's correct, yeah, yeah. So the, the original style of that, it's, 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 it's changed a bit, it's evolved a little bit over the years, but right. it was basically the same unit we see now. 
Right. Um, okay. Attached to. Um, I'm thinking like a milling machine. Oh, or no, 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 How no, the no, heck no. did you make that? No, I've never, never made anything that big. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Right. So, um, Aegon Engineering has been around five years. So, you make the 72, you now, you're 48, you now make like a star platen for so it. A star platen, which will take you to a 60 inch belt. Yeah. We make the, um, there, was a, there was a call for a high end grinder. So, we, we um, well, myself and, and Simpson Engineering actually sat down together. Um, when Simpson and we, right. we came up with some ideas, he he was he he's far better at sort of welding than I am, so right. you know, and fabrication side. So we we sat down together and, and, and designed the Gibson seventy two, um, right. and and I, I I guess he designed the the manufacturing side of how it was going to right. be right. how yeah. it's going to be assembled, and I designed the sort of nitty gritty of the, the tracking and the, yeah. and the you know the accessories and all that sort of stuff. So. Yeah, yeah that was that was actually a collaboration. Not many people know that. And the, the Gibson, whilst, whilst I again, I didn't name it. Um, the yeah. Gibson was actually Gibson and Simpson put together, but it just sounds like Gibson. Ah, <laughs> yeah, convenient. Um, that. Yeah, very convenient. Um, yeah, so so uh, over all this time, we've um, I've just been fighting away, and all of a sudden, you realise that uh, in in four years, we've manufactured nearly eight hundred grinders. Um, right. Which is just sort of amazing. Like, I didn't. We never thought when we started it, started on it. Like, just make a few grinders and just see where it goes. Yeah. And we've just tried to sort of stay stay with the industry and and, and keep supplying what the industry needed. Yeah. And what what people were wanting. And, and I suppose you have to attribute a significant amount of that to Corin, his ability oh. to advertise and his work uh, platform. Like absolutely. His, 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 his the energy and the drive that he puts into the knife making industry is just just. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's well, got so much passion for the industry, you know. Well, and father in law of the knife making industry, we had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he does. He, yeah. he loves it, but he pretends he doesn't care. No, that's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's great to see. I think without his drive, the industry wouldn't be anything like oh, the size it is today. Yeah, and yeah. it's great to see, like, weekends like this weekend, so many people coming out to learn, to meet people, to network, to, you know, show, and even show off their, show off their blade. It's, you know, yeah. it's great yeah. to see. Great to see. That is pretty awesome. Mm. Uh, the grinder, obviously, it's all it's five years is still a relatively young company, especially to have made that many yeah. tools already, and you're expanding the range of stuff you've got all the time. Is that something that you're doing because you want to keep going with the industry, or is that something that Gamaco is looking for more product and you're trying no, to fill those holes? Or? Unfortunately for me, I can't make a product and be happy with it. Oh, and just make it because my, my you know, I, I don't sleep at night. I don't think. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I stay up and I think. All right, you know, I, I, there's always fresh ideas coming yeah. into my head. How you can do this? How you can do that? Whether it's ways of making the existing product better, whether it's better for the end customer, mm -hmm. whether it's better from a manufacturing point of view, whether it's better from a sustainability point of view. Yeah, um, right. You know, and that's important. To and that's important to me. Yeah. yeah. So, um, some people would know we're we're actually building a new workshop at the moment. Um, with Fort Leonard. I have heard of that. So we're yep. building, we're, we're, we still work out of our workshop at home. Um, something that we we always wanted to do was make it a business that um, we, we would keep small in, in, in the sense that we wouldn't really employ anyone. We contract a lot of work out to, to big CNC shops, yeah. laser cutting shops, things like that. Um, but we never really wanted to tie ourselves to staff. M members to, to staff. To cost. Yeah. To, to overhead of, of, of renting workshop space. So we're building this workshop. Um, we made the pretty huge decision that we'd run it, everything off solar. So we've got, um, just put a monster three-phase solar system in. Rather than Which is very uncommon. Very well, uncommon. There's quite um, a bit of three-phase solar, but to be able to run the levels yeah, you're so, going to need. So it was, it, was, it was quite difficult to find someone who understood right. the requirements. Yeah. Um, you know, they go, oh, well, you know, we just do grid connect systems. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, many people did that, but to, to find someone that could do that um, and do it, do it properly was, was right. difficult. But so you're off grid? So, so once we move, so we're not moved yet, but once we move, we'll be completely off grid. Yeah, right. What battery yeah. system did you go for? Uh, so we've got a 50 kilowatt hour lead carbon. Oh, you've got a lead carbon, actually. Yeah, yeah. Right. So lithium ions don't offer the high enough peak draw. No. Until you They're get not there yet, are they? Until you get to a huge, we'd have to put a huge bank in, which yeah. is just outrageously no, priced. And, and yeah, not, not, <laughs> not no, really right. I'm incredibly passionate about the yeah. solar and, and about sustainability. Yeah. So yeah. that's quite impressive to see the, the business that's one of the forefront 
in our country for the for our industry yeah. using sustainable <laughs> sources. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. Well, you know, it's, it was a big decision. Yeah, I'd I'd say it's a big decision. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, kind of been the same price as putting the power. Well, you know, the power, the power poles are 500 meters away, so yeah. you know, this would have cost a bit to bring the poles up, but it's <laughs> not the same. Not the same, yeah. But it's yeah. investment into the future as well. Well, that's exactly right. right. So let's talk about knife makers. Do you make knives? I do make knives. Yeah. Um, as I said earlier, I started by making, um, really by making reenactment swords. Although I think I do, there are some knives I made when I was maybe 13 or 14. You know, yeah, right, so it goes way back. It goes way back. Um, I, I saw a, um, a blacksmith do a demo at, um, like Canlow Markets or something, um, mm-hmm. years and years ago, um, and maybe when I was eleven or twelve, and I was just mesmerised yeah, by this yeah. guy making miniature horseshoes, and you know, I was like, this, yeah, so I want to do this, so I want to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, I was there. <laughs> well, it wasn't Gray Maskey, was it? He loved it, or Doug mostly. Oh, I look, I'm they not sure. It. it was down. Canlow was down in Vega, yeah. but yeah, I don't remember. Was it? It was. A, I remember the forge. Yeah, you know, yeah. I remember the forge. forge. It was it was a really unusual forge. It had a vertical bellow in the bottom yeah. of the forge. It was around around the bottom of the forge with a vertical. I love the fact you remember that. Yeah, that's like, the sort of thing I'd remember from when I was. <laughs> yeah. this is dismantling yeah. in my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This yeah. 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 Um, yeah, and then you know, I, I obviously making grinders. There's a, a, an unbelievable need to test them. So of course, you know, I have to make a few knives right. along the way. Cool. Um, I, I guess I, I was. Um, I was fortunate enough. I, I always wanted to make tools, and I was fortunate enough to do Art Skills course when he was in Australia. You did tool making course. Do a tool making course. Ah, um, what three, three years, years ago now? Yeah. Um, at Everly Works, and you know that really reignited that yeah, passion for making tools because that was really, I guess, where it, where it really started. Yeah, yeah, I wanted yeah. to make tools, but I never really had the the knowledge or you know, and back then there was no internet to go and watch YouTube videos. Three years ago. No, no, no. It just wasn't the same level of no. videos. No, back 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 when, when I was oh, you know, okay. when I was growing up, you know, like Well YouTube's only what, nine years old, ten yeah. years old. Now. Yeah. So even 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 just forums and things didn't no, exist, you know, like couldn't give you the information. So that really reignited that. So I, I love I much these days rather than knives, I much prefer my canvas axes. Yeah, right. Yeah, you know, handle handle tools. Yeah. Um but you know there's still time, there's still knives I, I I still do enjoy making knives and I still have yeah. knives I want to make, it's just right now the time is not. And do you, do you sell tools? Like no, I, I know you sell your items now, but do you sell your hand tools you make or your knives you make? No, no, generally generally not. Um, it's not something that, I think if, I don't make enough to do that. Um, right. I've given a few away just to people. Yeah, so which is what we all do when we make crap knives. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> they work crap really. <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, I think I think it, it, for me it's it's something that's enjoyable all the time. There's no need to for me to be able yeah, to yeah, monetize it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, I, I think when you monetize something, it takes something away. Yeah. From it, you know. Though I have this terrible disease, everything can be a company. I I I, I start doing anything. I can make money out of this. Yeah. And I definitely yeah. spend too much time and energy buying fire oh. inch grinders and things like that. Never <laughs> <laughs> actually recouping their own money. Yeah. 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 But. So kudos to you for not wanting to actually try to make it a company, just enjoying the, the knife making. Yeah, I think, I like to say, I think, I mean, the, the, the joy for us is that I, I guess, um, and, and we're lucky that I've found what I want to do. Mm. And I enjoy making these machines, I enjoy the designing. So you still love it, it even though you're doing it every day? Even, even though I do it every day, I still enjoy it. I still get a kick out of assembling and finishing grinders and seeing yeah. mine up on the bench and, you know, ready to go. It really gives me a good kick. But, and, and it's so surreal, like it really is. You look at that, and you know, five years ago, this mission didn't exist. Didn't exist. Yeah, you know, even a thought. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so yeah. on a slight tangent, do you do the surface grinder for the 48? Yep. So, yeah. yeah, so it'll fit. It'll fit any of my grinders except the multi tool upgrade. Um, and it'll fit most. You do a multi tool upgrade? Yeah, so we do this we little. Is it? So we do this little thing that, that bolts on with a multi tool on the bench grinder, um, which takes it to a 48. Really? Gives you a vertical platen. Oh, of the wheels. How much is that? Uh, two ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to upgrade my multi tool. I don't have two forty eight. At least at the same belt size. That's, that's exactly right. It gives you it's economy, love. It's economy. Yeah. <laughs> it gives you that forty eight belt, which is just so much. There's so much more variation in, in belts yeah. available in forty eight. Why are we working in forty eight? I mean, obviously the Americans love seventy two. Um, I, I don't actually the, the the root of it. I don't know why. I assume somewhere there was a um. Someone in Australia started a standard, so the Australian standard belt sizes that you can just generally go and buy off the shelf are 48 inch, still 12, 20 millimeter, but they're really right. 48 inch. 
um, 60 inch, and then I think the, the next standard is generally two meters. So the semi oh, right, okay. is not actually a standard size in Australia. Okay. You can't just walk into your average engineer shop, the bracing store, and buy a semi twitch belt. I gotta admit, I didn't know you could walk into a, into anywhere and buy a 48 inch. Yeah. You I can. just buy them off Camico. Yeah, <laughs> well, of course oh, you do. <laughs> yeah. Um, in America, obviously, 72 is a standard size that oh, I believe maybe Beta um, yeah, right. bought in and, and they've stuck with it ever since. Um, in Europe, they use a lot of two metre belts. Um, and I think there's a 108 inch belt as well, yeah, which right. is sort of common in larger Yeah, yeah, I've seen some ridiculously large ones. Yeah. But you know, the, the machines get obviously bigger and bigger as you go up in belt size and you know, leadership type stuff. Yeah, yeah. You, you really, you really not something we need in the knife making industry. And at the end of the day, if the, even a 36 inch belt is more than capable for knife making because because of the way we grind, because of the material we're grinding, we're never pushing those belts to anything like their limits. Um, you simply can't because of Heat, heat control when you're grinding um, and the power we use. We're using relatively small motors mm. to drive our machines because we don't need to remove huge amounts of stock. Yeah, um, you know, big industry, they're, they're, they're pushing much bigger motors, much higher bolt speeds, and they're driving these abrasives as hard as they possibly can, but you know, they're removing yeah. huge amounts of stock. And, yeah. in, in, and in stock, it doesn't matter if they get it too hot. Yeah, you know, of course. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. It's not like a knife where you've got to watch your heat and how hot they get. You know. And you, and you just hang on. Yeah. What? What? Whilst we're on the subject, the the VFDs you use, obviously you don't produce those. No. no. They're just coming from what are they called? Invitec. Uh, so there's Invitec and Tico, the two main companies. Right. We use. Um, we're using Tico's again at the moment. We find that they're a better price. I noticed they're different. Oh, actually, I'm not the Invitec one. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you said the other one was. Um, what, what, what do they run at? Because I think the Invitec only runs at 50 hertz. No, so we, um, so one of the one of the joys of, of um, a variable frequency drive is that we can specify um, whatever their program is. Right. So the Invitec's out of the box. If we just bought them as they are, they do only run 50 hertz. Right. Um, we've got them programmed to run for 80 hertz. So 80, right? I didn't think it was quite 100. Do you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. 100 is just 100 starting to push the limits of the bearings on the two inch wheel. Oh, that's so right. whilst whilst the bearings are technically capable of coping with those yeah. speeds in a perfect environment, we're not grinding in a perfect environment. No. So you know, oh, shit. particularly with the dust we're producing, oh. um, the last thing you want to do is try and push those bearings as hard as you can. So yeah, yeah. well, especially if you're going with a small wheel kit. And, and well, small wheels, you know, small wheels, you absolutely need to bring the speed down uh, because again, the bearing speeds just get so high. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, the bearings are rated to. Very high speeds, but again, that's theoretical. Really, in a perfect environment, um, again, we're not working in a perfect environment. So no, well, and the gearing from that size driver, that little tiny wheel, is massive, it's huge. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we've covered quite a bit of information. Is there anything you've got? Any pearls of wisdom? Pearls of wisdom? Um, no, I, I, not really. Not really. I mean, I guess at the end of the day, it's just great to see this industry taking off, and that there's so many people interested in. in Doing things with their hands and making something, yeah. making something that'll last for you know generations, hopefully. You know. And yeah, and it's Evans. It, Evans, yeah, exactly. You know, and and whilst of course I appreciate that that a lot of those people might be buying my products and helping us to support our family and and, and, and have a future. Mm. There's also the people that obviously aren't buying Ada for engineering products, and that's fine because they're still driving that industry and they're mm. still they're still pushing it forward and they're still you know and people like S. Fred that. Are making things that are just unbelievable. They've, they've had this idea in their head, and they're going, "Oh, I'm going to try and make this." And to see those ideas coming out of people and, and see that creative yeah. process, it's just uh, that's that's all you need to see, really. You don't need anything else from the industry. Well, like, you know, little material, how little tools you have, and that sort of stuff. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah. But you know, none of us have excuses now. No, we should be making amazing stuff. stuff. Like he them. kept saying, "Don't tool people. You don't need tools. Yeah, yeah. Buy all the Tell tools. Them you yeah. All of the forty eight engineering tools ever made. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we have some stay home." Yeah, yeah, no. I think um, I think it's just great to see the industry grow. I'm myself and and, my, and Sarah, who also she's here this weekend helping out, cooking and yep, doing all sorts it. of things. Yeah, um, we're both ex extremely appreciative of all the support we've had from the industry and, and from uh, from from just everybody. Mm. I actually love that about. Interestingly enough, I've been in a few hobbies in my time. My wife will tell you. <laughs> I've been in a few industries. I've done more jobs than anyone else I know. 
And I think the knife make industry, and I can only say for Australia because this is where I live, I cannot believe how much people want to share and want to help. They barely know people and they're like, yeah, come in, like I'll show you what I'm doing. Yeah, they give yeah. away all their deepest secrets, stuff they've worked on for years, like like Rodrigo. Yeah. Like yeah. He, he doesn't have to share that information. He just happily just ga- gave, gave it away, yeah, away yeah, yeah, yeah. any issue. And, yeah. and I really am blown away by how oh, I think I think it's just part of the culture that goes with it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And, and that culture will always breed that culture. So, mm. you know, it's good to see that it's like that because the last thing you need is you know, guys keeping secrets and you know, yeah, taking yeah. it to their grave or, or not, you know, just never sharing them. Oh, well, that's, 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 that's the terrible stuff that you see in like, the Japanese industry. And that's yeah, yeah. Like, they're, they're losing these people and no one has any idea people, how they did things. People like Mike, I to shout out to Mike Peterson. You know? He's here again, yeah. smelting steel, nice. showing, giving away all this. Up till like four in the morning, then back up again at like six. Yeah, yeah, you know, just, 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 to, just to show us how he smelts steel, yeah. how he controls the fire, you know, it's just... Because that could easily be a lost art. In fact, it was a lost art for a yeah. while. And then yeah. Yeah, people spent time trying to work it out again. It could easily disappear. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and people like Mike, it's just great to see that, you know, he's, he's learned it and he's, he's so keen to, to show other people yeah. 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 Awesome. All right. Where the, everyone should know what eighty four engineering is, and if you don't, shame on you. But tell us where we can find you. You can find us well, other than through Gamaco, of course. Uh, Gamaco are our main, um, well, our only um, outlet in Australia. Okay, so you um, only sell. Through so we only sell through oh, Gamaco. Okay. Um, we do sell the multi tool upgrade kits direct, um, but everything else, all the other grinders through Gamaco. Um, we obviously find us online. Through the latest door engineering you'll find their website yeah um but yeah if you're not in australia um you and you're in the in the uk uh, or europe we do have um multi-tool products uk have just started selling our products in europe and the uk so that's really exciting um so that jonathan very jonathan woodward um of multi-tool products uk um he's a great guy so um he'd love to hear from you if you're interested in the guns yeah, well, there you go. Anyone yeah. in the UK, if I end up back there in the next couple of years, then I'm not <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and yeah, he's, um, he's a great guy. Awesome. All right, thank you very much. No worries. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Awesome. So, as you may have seen there, I think he bent my arm a little bit. Maybe that's what I'll tell my wife anyway. But I bought the attachment for my uh, shop mate. No, not for my shop mate, for my um, multi-tool. So I now have a 48 multi-tool and a 48 grinder, which means I can run the same belts. It's economy, love. Economy. Um, which I use my shop mate for um, my multi-tool. Damn it. Just remember the words, man. It's not that hard. I use my multi-tool for timber. It doesn't need so much uh, speed control as I'm like ripping down blocks. Some of you may have seen I've been doing some... Um, some blocks like like this and like this and like this and several lots of little fun ones like stabilizing some colors and sometimes you just need to square the blocks up and that sort of stuff and so I've been ripping lots of those down um, man I've been doing some fun stuff I got carried away like I, I, I did I did actually buy way too many um, Illumilite dyes and whatnot to go my cactus juice so i'm very happy with the things i've been coming up with and uh you may hear that annoying noise in the background and that's because i just realized i forgot to turn off my vacuum pump during this whole freaking video so if it's really annoying i'll be doing it again that'll be painful anyway hope you enjoy this video please subscribe i love you all and um let's wait for the next one or oh, hang on give you and some love Give the dude some love. You and a star. Go and just message the guy on Facebook or something and tell him you love him. Buy his stuff. It's, it's awesomely made. Really happy with it. Um, I'm not sponsored by the man in any way. I just love his gear. Ooh, that sounded really weird. I just love his tooling. Anyway, uru. Have a good day. Australia, I, I don't know, obviously, the Wait, sorry, I just thought I would get... That's better. How you doing?
Uh, Ewan. Ewan Gregson. Gibson. I just did it again. Ewan Gibson. His name's Gibson. It's not that hard. Ewan Gibson. I'm not going to do that.